Good morning, everybody. Today we are in downtown Phoenix. We're gonna drive up one of the most iconic streets in town, Central Avenue Corridor. Central Avenue Corridor stretches from the uh, downtown area in the south and roughed in basically on the north end by Camelback. Uh, it's got McDowell that cuts across it, as well as some of the major arteries in the Phoenix area, Thomas, Indian School. It is one of the most heavily trafficked streets in town. It also has this iconic metro you see on the left. And we should see a couple of trains today coming by. I love the sound of the metro. I love the sound of the metro station. It's such an iconic sort of experience down here. Upward on the left, you can see the Westward Ho. This is really one of the landmarks when you get into downtown Phoenix. Coming in from the surrounding valleys, you know you're there when you see it. I love seeing the students back too. On the left there is Arizona State University, downtown campus. That area is, uh, and that, I should say that campus is known for the Watts College, uh, which is up on the right. That's a, a school of broadcasting, as well as a world-class nursing school. It's so great to see the campus back in action after what we all went through and one of the, I guess you could say, one of the toughest 18 months the city has really ever experienced but everyone seems to be back be out and enjoying themselves that building was actually constructed in like 1927 and it has a connection with the city of New Orleans um, its grand opening was in 28 and its official closure was in 1980 its historic relevance uh, was really around some of the hotel rooms and then some of the ballrooms. Uh, one was known as the turquoise room and it was like on the second floor. And it was pretty famous. Um, but after the closure in the 80s, um, it's become subsidized housing. So it's actually a place where folks a little more down on their luck can, act, can go there and uh, get subsidies and live in the area. And if you know anything about the Phoenix market, and if you don't, that's okay too, because that's why I'm here. <laughs> but this area, in terms of rent and cost of living, has really gone up. I know it's happening all over the world, but Phoenix has experienced, I think it was, they said it was a 250% rise in rent costs. And so subsidized housing and the ability to support people to continue to live in the area uh, definitely has some importance. Now we're getting into the Roosevelt Row area. And Roosevelt Row is just a famous corridor, lots of restaurants and you know, great hotels. I think that on the left is known as the Foundry, which was one of those renovated hotels recently. Um, and it's now very uh, Art Deco Nouveau. Right now we're crossing over I-10 and this is known as the Deck Park. Um, and below us, and we've been on it in a couple of other my videos, and you can check those links out in the, the comments below, but we've the Deck Park Tunnel runs right underneath what we just drove over. And now we're heading into what's commonly known as Midtown. So we've left, left downtown behind us, and we're heading into an area that is mixed use and residential. And you can see the famous building up on the left. It's known as the Vlad Tower. I think BMO is in there now, but the Vlad Tower it was built in 91 and its claim to fame is that it resembled a dial bar of soap at the time. Check out the growth and all of the gentrification of this area. A lot of exciting development is coming back into the area. Vacant lots, buildings that have fallen into disrepair are now getting fixed up. And you can see we're sort of transitioning into that sleek, modern architecture on the left while maintaining some of the historic feel. Even buildings that were built relatively, that you would consider relatively new, so say over the last 20 years, they try to uphold a certain level of aesthetic that matches up with the surrounding area. We just passed the Phoenix Towers on the right known. Uh, they were some pretty high-end apartments back in the 50s um, and then have been recently renovated. And on the left, you just continue, continue to see new apartments and condos going up. As I mentioned, the metro station runs, or the metro line runs all the way down central. It heads all the way up to 19th Avenue 
just south of Dunlap. And this, if you stay on it, can take you all the way out to East Mesa, uh, which is I have roughly 24, 25 miles directly. It goes also by, which is kind of a neat fact, it goes by the Angels Stadium in Tempe, where they do the spring training. Now you can feel the transition into the more sleek and modern midtown, almost uptown feel. We just passed a U-Haul, right? A multi-story U-Haul with air conditioning units. And then up on here is uh, some of the hotels. The Westin's going to be up here, as well as the JW Marriott. On the left, as you start to see the Creighton University come in there, just behind the billboard, that's all new, built in the last two years. That used to be, I mean, it still kind of is, but it used to be known as the Park Central Mall, which was a shopping mall. And over the years, it fell into disrepair. As many malls have sort of struggled in the last you know, two decades or so. So what's happened is they've redeveloped and repurposed the land. You've got parking, mixed-use development. There's a hospital just a little bit left of the Park Central Mall. And then as you can see, and as we'll see when we get a little closer here, the Creighton University buildings that are, I mean, they're so new, they probably still smell like fresh paint. Another thing that's really interesting about this area is just how incorporated open space, parks, and high-end housing is to this sort of multi-use and even mixed-use development. So right now, we're within two miles of three major popular golf courses in Canto, the Encanto Vista, and the Phoenix Country Club. Phoenix Country Club is actually a host to multiple golf tournaments for the PGA and LPGA throughout the year. And all these neighborhoods have interesting names. So on the right-hand side, as we pass Thomas, we're into the Parker Woodman neighborhood. And on the left-hand side, we just past the mixed-use area, um, as I mentioned, Park Central, but also Encanto Village in there. Each one of these buildings has some significance as we move forward. You've got the 3300 3, Tower, excuse me, up on the left-hand side, and that is an iconic uh, tower, if you will. I remember when it opened originally um, it was a very popular get if you could you know, move in there and, and, and get a place in there. Here's that Creighton University on the left I mentioned. You can tell that building's brand new. The Century Plaza condominiums are up here on the right. And I also want to call out the views because one of these times I'll have to go up and maybe we'll do a walkabout where I take the camera because some of the rooftop views and there on the right you can see the balconies. Those, they're going to be able to see, on a clear day, hundreds of miles. Now you can feel a little bit of transition into just a slightly older portion of the neighborhood. Up ahead we have the Great Western Bank and there's City Square. There's a, something called Suara View which is up on the left as well. and then. Not too much further, we'll start to see the famous park for Midtown Uptown, which is known as Steel Indian Park. I'd be remiss too if I didn't mention the restaurants that dot Central. This is one of the areas where you can really find a great meal. In this area, you'll find restaurants like Postino's, Pizzeria Bianco, and all sorts of different meals of uh, great Mexican food, uh, the famous Macau's, which was an actually a local favorite. It was up on the right, and we should see it. I believe there'll be a pyramid. I'll make sure we point it out, but that was the original Macau's building. There's also, we're getting into a place where the architecture really gets interesting. So you see these buildings on the right. So these are like in the Edmonds Business Park, but check out that building right there. It's gone through a couple of different owners, but right in this area, it's just been so interesting. Clarendon Park on the left, and that Great Western Bank Plaza Center on the right. More development. That's 
the key to this area and as we get a little further north you'll start to see more and more new development um, as the city it, it, it's almost gentrifying if you will up central up 7th Avenue as well as up 7th Street which I have a couple of other videos that I've done on 7th Avenue and 7th Street but um, we're looking to get back out there there's been some requests by subscribers to tour that area again and check out the latest so we will soon with the high rises behind us for the most part now we're entering into that steel Indian Park area which will be on the right behind Central Ave over there and then you can see more new development on the right but look at that view you can see all the way out to Piastoa Peak and so every now and then you'll see the mountains Camelback will peak, peak out every now and then it's, it's awesome On the left hand side there, prior to the pandemic, this was a community garden area where they would grow food and it was, it was quite a project, but from what I understand, um, it fell on hard times during, like we all did during the pandemic and so at this point it, it's just a vacant lot, but it's a cool idea. On the right hand side we're going to start to come up to two very iconic schools. One Central High School which is a famous high school locally in Central Phoenix and then in the distance that temple and, and that wonderful architecture Spanish style is Brophy College Prep School as we pass this church right behind the church is Brophy College Prep School back in there famous school, a, just a wonderful private school from what I understand, um, and also understand that they offer scholarships, and um, I've just heard great things about it. Now here we are, we're at the spur of Camelback and Central. So on a future video, we're going to take Central all the way into the neighborhoods, but for now, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do. We're pushing 500 subscribers, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for those of you who've enjoyed the videos, who first who subscribed to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please do click the like button and the bell. It'll keep you up to date on the latest. There's lots of new content coming out from areas around Phoenix. I know Wickenburg is on the list, as well as the Dunlap Corridor. We've had some requests to head out to the desert in the Queen Creek Santan Valley area as well as a 500 subscriber celebration that we're going to do in downtown Phoenix. So go ahead and hit subscribe, click the like button that'll keep you up to date. And remember if you have a place in the Phoenix area that you want us to go to, um, put it in the comments below. I'll grab the camera and we'll head that way. A lot of these tours and drives have been suggestions by you guys and these videos are so much fun to make and I hope you enjoy watching them one cool fact before we go on the right hand side used to be a Dutch Brothers coffee and it ran afoul with the local government because of the drive-through and so it actually just closed down and it moved three blocks over thanks again so much for coming along on this drive make sure you subscribe and as always thank you so much for watching